Tiger going to begin this hour with uh, some big news from NASA. Plans to return to the moon, even though the mission's two years away. The space agency is ramping up preparations. And the Artemis 3 mission set for 2025, which will send the next man and first woman to the lunar surface. Well, today, NASA and Axiom Space, they are unveiling the design, the spacesuit that will be worn by these nice. future moonwalkers. And first on CBS Mornings, Mark Strassman traveled to Houston to get a sneak peek of the new suit. It's got to be one of the most proud moments of my life, I guarantee you. Spacesuits. To go back to the moon, NASA's closet needed a refresh. That is the most beautiful sight. In space, to dress for success is a matter of survival. How hard is this? Uh, very. <laughs> it, is, it is very, very challenging. The glove bladders is kind of the inner layer. Russell Ralston works for Axiom Space. Last September, NASA hired the Houston Aerospace Company to build a new spacesuit for the first Artemis moon landing mission to the lunar south pole. Here, shadowed craters are home to some of the coldest temperatures in the solar system, almost 400 degrees below zero. Going into a permanently shaded region on the moon is its something that's never been done before uh, by anything. NASA spent 15 years developing its own next generation moon suit before outsourcing the project to Axiom. The company adapted more than half of NASA's design. So this is it. It, yes, it's pretty close. Inevitably, we'll tweak a couple things, but in large part, that, that's, that's pretty much the suit. With one notable cosmetic difference, the color. The outer layer will be white, made of mylar and kevlar. So the actual flight suit will look more, more like this. What about this suit would make Neil and Buzz and the, the Apollo guys jealous? Oh, probably everything. <laughs> I think this suit is going to have a, a, a huge leap forward in terms of mobility. Oh, it. The Apollo suits were bulky, inflexible. Moonwalking astronauts often fell. Getting back up looked like slapstick. It was hard work, yeah. Charlie Duke was the 10th man to walk on the moon. He remembers even the simplest of tasks, like picking up a hammer was a struggle. Working against that suit was uh, demanding, squeezing the gloves and moving the arms and trying to bend over, and uh, so it was exhausting. This suit will be much easier to walk in or to do, the, to do a lot of the same tasks that they did back in Apollo and more, um, but to do it in a, a little bit easier way. Axiom engineer Russell Kelly slipped into the suit to show us how flexible it can be. Yeah, you do that pretty easily. Oh yeah, it's, uh, it's not too bad. It's a top to bottom redesign. The helmet's greater visibility. And these boots were made for moonwalking, thermally insulated for the moon's south pole. Can you hit a golf ball in this suit? I hope so, I think you can. <laughs> and until now, no spacesuit was ever designed to fit a woman. Oh, I think it looks really cool. I Peggy the, Whitson the is director of human spaceflight at Axiom. I'm heading back to the pole. Copy, Peggy. You're the former NASA astronaut has spent more time in space than any American and completed 10 spacewalks wearing suits now more than four decades old. In some of them, I couldn't even get my hands together. That makes it hard to do a lot of detailed and delicate tasks. Just to have a suit that fits. Oh, it's huge. <laughs> This 21st century spacesuit is made with 21st century technology. Laser cutters precisely slice different fabrics. These 3D printers build components, saving time and money. But some parts are still assembled the old fashioned way. In Axiom's sewing room, we met Zach Paw. His resume includes the Houston Ballet and Cirque du Soleil. His new challenge, space gloves. There is definitely an added sense of responsibility with space work. This is more exacting? This is more exacting, yeah, exactly. Axiom suit prototypes will eventually be tested here at NASA's Neutral Buoyancy Laboratory. Part of the 40-foot deep pool now simulates a South Pole lunar landscape. We can mimic um, partial gravity. NASA's Laura Kearney oversees the program and will make sure Axiom is meeting requirements. It's going to give us a really great indication of how mobile the suit is and again what kind of fatigue, if anything, the crew members are going to feel after working for six or seven hours. 
Making a suit for an astronaut is no ordinary trip to a tailor. And Axiom knows the stakes. I go to church with astronauts. We see them when we're getting groceries. We, we know their kids. The product you're making, their life is going to depend on that. So it's something we take extremely seriously. The moon seems closer than ever. And this new suit is a big step. For CBS Mornings, Mark Strassman in Houston. Fascinating. Wow, that is amazing. I just want to know, like, how do they seal all those seams in the suit? Because they have to be airtight, right? Yeah. But it, you saw him. They're making those stitches. So it, any guesses? Just very carefully, yeah. I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Probably many, many, many layers. Yes, yeah. yes. I love that blooper reel from the moon. Oh, the Poor so guys funny. falling over. I know. Oh, my gosh. But just these new the, suits are going to be a game changer. Yeah. 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 I actually like the colorful gloves. It's kind of unfortunate they're going to yeah. cover them with the yeah. white gloves. Yeah. Like, you know, maybe for the Halloween costume version, we can get the colorful kind. And for women, I'm thinking they have breastplates, right? Something that gives gives a little more room for women Pro in yes. the upper Yes. I'm sure they're taking region. it all into an account. Yes. The upper it's region. important. Yeah. <laughs> the upper quadrants. What are you trying to get at, Michelle? I'm going to take this. 